blues is arguably the most important song form in jazz, and everybody needs to learn how to play the blues and should spend a lot of time practicing the blues. So in this video today, I wanna to go over three different blues song forms as jazz musicians we need to know, need to understand how they work, and need to be able to improvise over them. Come in right up. What's up, Brent here from LearnJazzStandards.com, which is a blog, a podcast, and videos all geared towards helping you become a better jazz musician. Thanks so much for being here. Make sure you subscribe at the button below in case you've never done that before to get locked in to everything we've got going on here. So again, like I said, the blues is probably the most important form in jazz music. You know, maybe second to that, rhythm changes, but Jazz really comes out of the blues. So you need to understand the blues, you need to understand the chord progression and how it works. And of course, there's lots of jazz blues heads that you need to know too. And I did a video on that. I'll link that in the card above. You can check that out later. But I find that there are really three main blues chord progressions that I see come up time and time again, even though jazz musicians, of course, still add a bunch of other changes in there. So I wanna cover those right now so that we understand them together. I'm gonna get behind my computer and show you what I'm talking about. All right, here behind my computer with my guitar, even though you can't really see it. And I'm gonna go over these three blues forms that every jazz musician needs to know. Let's start with the basic blues, the basic 12 bar blues. Now, uh, if you listen to old blues recordings, like uh, listen to some Robert Johnson recordings and try to follow along, are they really playing a 12 bar form? Not really. If you listen to a lot of these, you know, they're kind of just switching to the four chord whenever they feel like it. You know, it's very more loose. The 12 bar blues is really a way for us to create a formula for the blues form. And this is the one that has kind of been settled on here. And so here are the chord progressions, the chord changes here for the basic blues. Uh, I'm doing it in the key of concert B flat, for example, here. So it sounds like this. B flat's the one chord, then the four chord, the one chord, and then the four chord, and then the one chord again. All right, then the five chord, the four chord, and the one chord. And usually, you know, some kind of five chord to turn it right back to the top again, right? Right? That's the basic blues right there. Now we do see this in jazz repertoire as well come up, the basic blues form, as opposed to the basic jazz blues form I'm gonna show you in one second. Um, but a great example would be Freddie Freeloader off of Miles Davis's album, Kind of Blue. So the way that one works is pretty much the exact same as this right here, except this chord right here, the one chord changes into, let me write it here, an A flat seven. So it actually sounds more like this. So it's the five chord to the four chord and then A flat seven instead of the B flat seven. That's one variation on it. Of course, again, lots of basic blues. So you need to know this form. Have this one memorized forwards and backwards. This is really the first starting point. But jazz musicians obviously add a bunch of different chord changes to this basic blues and really spice it up. So that's where we come to our basic jazz blues. Now you're gonna see some changes in a second that I'm gonna go over, and then I'm gonna add some extra changes here, spice it up even more than it already is, and do some things that typically jazz musicians will do over this chord progression. So let me play through the basic jazz blues really quick. All right, so we start with the one chord, B flat seven, four chord, E flat seven, back to the one chord, Okay, now the four chord. All right, back to the one chord. All right, here's where it changes. That's the dominant six chord. Then two, five, one. And then usually like two, five to turn it back around to the top. Okay, so that's the basic jazz blues. So what are the big differences in here compared to the basic blues form? Okay, well, we have this dominant six chord right here that acts as a secondary dominant. If you don't know what secondary dominant is, I'm going to link a video I did about it up in the card above. It has the secondary dominant here, 
and then it goes to a two chord, right? That secondary dominant, it's really arriving at this two chord. It's targeting this two chord right here. And so you have this two, five, one at the end there, the two, five, one most common chord progression in jazz. Okay. So this is just the very basics here of starting to add some jazz changes to the basic blues form and what jazz musicians typically will do. Now there's other things we can do. For example, to get to this four chord right here, jazz musicians will also often add a two, five in front of it. So that would be F minor seven, B flat seven to go to E flat seven. So now the form starts like this, B flat seven, four chord, one chord, now two, five, one of E flat seven, right? That's a two, five secondary dominant chord progression, right? Cause the two, the five, the F minor seven, the B flat seven, they're really doing what? They're targeting the E flat seven, right? We're turning around to the E flat seven. Does that make sense? Okay, so where do we go for, what else would jazz musicians do next? Well, over here in bar number six, you'll oftentimes see, this is a very gospel thing to do, an E diminished seven. So the diminished seven, a half step above the four chord. So now let's turn around to the four chord. So F minor seven, B flat seven, E flat seven, E diminished seven, and back to the B flat seven. Now sometimes, because it's good, uh, good voice leading, chromatic movement, this will be a B flat seven slash F, not very good at writing that, F, right? That makes sense, right? Because the E goes to the E flat to the E to the F, right? You might do that, right? Okay, so you have this gospel thing going on. six chord, but there's other ways to get to the six chord. So one way we could do it, we'll put a C minor seven right here. And then instead of playing this G seven here, we'll play a D minor seven to the G seven. Now, what is that right there? That's a two, three, six. So we're going one, two, three, six. So it sounds like this. Let's start at the E flat seven. So E flat seven, E diminished seven, B flat seven, C minor seven, D minor seven, G seven, and then the two chord, right? So one more time that goes B flat seven, C minor seven, D minor seven, G seven. That sounds nice, right? So that's one way we can get around. So that's a one, two, three, six to get to the two, five, one at the end. Or here's another way we could do it. We could go, and this is, this is another common way. I'm gonna put the changes right above this one. We could go, B flat seven to E flat seven, right? That's the four chord to the three six. So instead of D my, uh, C minor seven, we go to an E flat, E flat seven. So B flat seven, E flat seven, D minor seven, G seven, right? Oops, that sounded weird. Right, so B flat seven, E flat seven, D minor seven, G seven. So it could be B flat seven, C minor seven, D minor seven, G seven, or B flat seven, E flat seven, that's the four chord, D minor seven, G seven, right? So all kinds of different ways already that we can get around and add different chord changes to these. Now, if we really wanted to as well, this is gonna get a little bit out and a little bit creative, but we could add right here a C sharp minor seven, an F sharp seven, and then here a C minor seven to an F seven right here. So now we have what we call a chromatic two five. So let's start at the four chord so you can hear how this goes. So E flat seven, E diminished seven, B flat seven, C minor seven, D minor seven, G seven, C sharp minor seven, F sharp seven, C minor seven, F seven. Right, so it sounds like this. So we have that chromatic two five we could add in there. 
Um, we could add, instead of just a one and then a two five for the turnaround, we could just do a, a classic one six, two five, so I have the G seven, so it's B flat seven, G seven, C minor seven, F7. So these are a bunch of common options you could add to a jazz blues here. But jazz musicians will also add even more changes to this. And this is really Charlie Parker's way of adding even more to the blues. We call this a bird blues. So let me go down to this one. This is where things kind of get a little bit out, but it's still all based off of a 12 bar form. Now, immediately before I play it, I have these circled and I'll recircle circle them as well. This is the one chord the four chord and the five chord, right? These are the chords that are being targeted in this blues. And those are the important chords, right? Remember the basic jazz blues? One, four, five are the chord progressions we really need to care about. So let me just play through this really quick. So one chord, two, five of six, six chord, two, five of four, Now cycling chromatics. Two, five, one, six, two, five. Okay, so this is the bird blues. This is Charlie Parker's changes over blues. And obviously there's a lot of creative things going on here. First of all, we sub the one chord for a major seventh chord, right? B flat major seven. Then we're actually targeting the sixth chord. We're basically doing a big detour, right? We're trying to get to this four chord right here. That's where we're really trying to go. So we take a little bit of a roundabout way. We target the sixth chord with a two, five of six, secondary dominant. That's A minor seven flat five, D seven, G minor seven, which is the sixth chord of the key. And then we're trying to get to the four chord, right? So we added these changes right here in the basic jazz blues it's targeting the four chord right there so just f minor seven b flat seven two five of four e flat seven now here's where the chromatic two fives come in right it's a big cycle of chromatic two fives because really we're just trying to get to this five chord or even more appropriately in this case the two chord to get to the five to get to the one right so we go to the four chord now we turn it to a minor seven chord. We have E flat minor seven, A flat seven, right? That's almost like a two, five to G, uh, to D flat major, right? Two, five to D flat major, but it doesn't go there. It doesn't resolve. It just goes E flat minor seven, A flat seven, two, five, then a chromatic half step down. So D minor seven, G seven, right? That's like a two, five to C major seven, but it doesn't resolve. So D minor seven, G seven, D flat minor seven, G flat seven, right? Doesn't resolve. And then it goes to C minor seven, just a half step down, but we finally now made it to our two five back to the tonic, which is B flat seven, right? C minor seven, this is a two, five, one. Right? A great bird blues tune is uh, Blues for Alice by Charlie Parker. There's also Chi Chi is a good one. That one's an A flat. There's also one called Freight Train. So those are some to check out. That's just basically the way that jazz musicians took the blues to the next level. So make sure you know these three forms. You'll see them come up time and time again. Let me know in the comments what other kinds of chord changes you would add to a blues or how you approach the blues. If you have any other creative suggestions of how you can work on the blues form, add even more chord changes. All right, that's all for today's video. Hope you got some value out of this today. Study up and I'll be sure to see you in the next video.